Well, the question is how the three conventions uh, contribute to sustainable land management. Well, first, because land degradation starts with the loss of soil biodiversity. That's how the degradation is initiated. And if we want to counter it, and if we want to prevent and reverse degradation, we must work together. And another point is, if you consider biodiversity, for instance, in the dry land, it is precisely where biodiversity is critical for adaptation of the people and the ecosystem and for resilience building. So again, when you initiate the cycle of degradation, it is true biodiversity loss, and then the land is being degraded, it worsens the status of the, of the climate, the climate will therefore move towards more aridity and more variability, and that's how we end, we end up in an ecological crisis. So in that regard, the three conventions must work together at all levels, from the global to the local. And regard the synergies where there's room to do more and to have more impact in uh, uh, implementing the convention is at local level. People at the local level, if you ask anyone who depends on uh, the natural resources to make a living, they won't tell you about diversity, climate change or desertification. They will tell you their issues and the issues are holistic, are integrated. So to address it, then we need at country level framework to drive and to incentivize the synergies, action that will address the issues in, uh, in a very comprehensive manner. That's what we need. That's why we need to work together. Consider forest, for instance. None of the conventions has forest as a specific mandate. But where we really need to work together is on forest. You see, we are here in uh, Cancun, is in the, uh, where the Maya uh, civilization has been. But we need to remember that this has been a very, uh, let's say, successful civilization and they left a lot for us in inheritance but because the land has been degraded by the way they have been managing the land they have to leave that's why someone says that forests precede civilization and deserts follow them we must ensure that for our time for our generation that will not be the case and synergetic approaches is essential is key the need has been recognized. I mean, is it happening? Are the three conventions working together as, as you would like to see them working together? You see, look at uh, the calendar, look at the ecosystem pavilion where we are showing case of the need to move towards ecosystem services. Those are the type of things that we can do at the global level between the Secretariat of the Convention. But again, where action is needed to address issues in a holistic manner that we call synergy is at the local level with the people, with the people. And if you want to work with the people, then at national level, policy framework to incentivize, to drive the synergies at local level, at community level is needed. That's why through our work, through our joint undertaking, we are really pushing and calling for nations, country parties to the convention to work in that regard. And they are responding so far, are they, as far as you can see? There are success, success stories regarding you know, ecosystem services that are precisely the way to ensure that those who do the work, those who care for the, the natural resources are paid in, in return, that they are provided for a, a, a good reward of their work. This is needed. And here when we discuss about the clean development mechanism, of course we must learn the lessons and ensure that the clean development mechanisms are improved to ensure that at community level it it will pay them for their effort, that Red Plus will be pro poor. It is needed and that, well, in Kyoto, we knew that we need the forest on board, but we have not taken the forest on board in Kyoto. And now we have the forest on board. We need to move forward and ensure that we have the soil on board because forest does not grow in the atmosphere. They grow on the soil. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh,